Hello everyone, and welcome to another Top 5 Records video. And another one in the series in which I'm taking a closer look at the full discography of David Bowie. We have arrived at his third album, The Man Who Sold the World. And what I'm holding here is the US cover from 1970. This was a cartoon design. Um, I believe Bowie was involved. Hi Lei. My dog is uh, joining in the video. Um, I believe Bowie was involved because supposedly, or at least that's a theory I've heard, is that this is an image of the mental hospital that his brother, Terry, am I, if I'm correct, just the first name that popped in my mind, well, Bowie's brother uh, was held at the time. And Bowie was afraid of the insanity in his family. And these dark teams come back on this album. Now, later on, when this album got released in the United States, Bowie was not so happy with this cover, so he changed it to a cover of him wearing a dress for the UK release. I do not have that original release. I didn't want to buy a reissue, but the original release goes for thousands and thousands of euros. As a matter of fact, if you look at the, um, um, the beautiful... Um, series uh, made by i believe hbo or it's seen on disney plus um high fidelity where top five records the name comes from um as a matter of fact i i based it on the original film and novel but the, the, the show is also very good um the holy grail for the main character is to obtain a first uk uh, pressing of bowie the man who sold the world now i've not been listening to this copy because this album has been bootlegged a lot and this is actually an American bootleg of that album. What I've been listening to for this video is this, the 1972 British reissue of the album on Orange RCA, which is a very good sounding pressing. I'm not gonna dive too much into the pressings for this video. I'm gonna do a comparison, um, a comparison of the final pressings of this album in another video. I'm gonna focus solely on the album itself. And this is his third album, Bowie's third album. And by now we have already heard him do a lot of different styles, though this one is thematically, genre-wise, a lot closer to Space Oddity, Space Oddity, Space Oddity, uh, <laughs> than his first album. There are dark themes here and this is really a psychedelic folk album with elements of hard rock in there and those elements of hard rock were not present on space odyssey space oddity <laughs> um taking a look at the way this album opens the wide of a circle is an epic hard rock banger uh yeah bang a banger can i say the banger yeah perhaps it's a banger um it's eight minutes long it's really good. It has all sorts of interesting psychedelic sounds uh, in it. As a matter of fact, the entire first side, you go to from the White of the Circle to All the Madmen, which is good. Black Country Rock, that's a real good song. And I noticed for the first time, he does an, a Mark Bolan impression on here. Now, listening to this in chronological order, it's very interesting that Bowie was trying out this style, but also he was very much aware at this time that his frenemy, Mark Bolan, was conquering the UK. He was praised by some as uh, and his band that T-Rex would be the new Beatles. A lot of people hoped they would be the new Beatles. And Bowie felt that pressure. Um, I believe they, they, they even um, met in the studio during this production or the production of the next album. Bowie's imitating him here. Bowie's imitating him here. He, he must have felt... A bit bitter about his success because Bowie had, in this time mostly wanted to be successful so he was looking for ways to become successful that's why he was trying out all these genres that's why he was also trying out at this time a new band he formed a new band called The Hype and everybody was were wearing some superhero rainbow uh, outfits he worked with Mick Ronson for the first time and that's an interesting element because in some biographies it says that Visconti and Ronson were mostly the ones responsible for this album. But we just got married or engaged to Angie, his uh, then girlfriend wife, and he was 
emotionally not so present. He just told them if he liked the song or not and wrote some lyrics. Pretty good lyrics, by the way. So, I also read that Bowie was just hopping, uh, hopping on and passing by in the studio. So that Ronson and Visconti's influence is way bigger here. Yet, Bowie has always searched the influence of others, and in a 1998 interview he himself said that it's not tr true. He said that the chord changes were really his, and that they are typically Bowie. Interesting discussion. It's an interesting album overall, because... Um, overall, <laughs> I wanted to make a bridge to After All, the last song on side one. These are, these are very good. These first four songs are very inspired, very melodic, challenging recordings. And that focus just shifts away from me on the beginning of side two. Running Gun Blues, Save Your Machine, She Shook Me Cold are not bad songs. But my mind was drifting off. My mind was drifting off. And I listened to this album before I started this series. But I've always had this down moment at the beginning of side two. After which he catches on because, I mean, the title track, The Man Who Sold the World, is a masterpiece. That is a masterpiece. And the Superman, the final song on this album, is also very, very good. I mean, this is a great album. This is a great album with three less interesting songs to me. But the sound, what he was trying to do, the hard rock elements, the psychedelic folk rock elements. If you're not thinking about what's coming... And, and this is, I'm doing it for the first time because of the chronological experience. I'm much more engaged in the moment of what's going through Bowie's mind and accepting the music for, for what it is instead of a forecoming of the great Ziggy Stardust. This is a very good album. This is a very, very good album. That don't let it stand in the shade of, of all the experiments that are about to come because this is already an experiment, perhaps by someone who is seeking out fame and who is searching for what is popular, Th that might be the case. But yet, in that undefined moment, he defines himself. That's about it. I, re I really dig this album. I really dig this album. So what do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Leave a comment below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.